Thank you so much and thank you, band. Can we give our band a clap this morning? They do such a good job. You guys can take your seats. Hello, everybody. How are we? Are we good? Are we warm? Are we alive? Yes, good. <laughs> Little Josiah's been testing that third part for Jason and I, just really prodding that are you alive button. See how many times I can get you up during the night and you still say I'm alive. But no, I love being in the house of God. I love being in your wonderful company. Um, could you do me a really big favor? Do you mind if we just fill some of these forward seats? Can we come forward a little bit? We might like sit next to each other. Kirsten and Darren, you've nailed it. You are forward. <laughs> you've done well. Kerry, you're even allowed to come into the front row, dare I say. You're allowed to. Let's cuddle up a little bit. Scientifically, you will be warmer. Mm -hmm. And I got a PhD, so take my word for it. So good to see you. Let's, um, why don't we just bow our heads this morning. Let's just pray before we get into the word. Father God, we just thank you for everything you are. God, we just thank you that you are here, you are in our midst, Father. And God, just as it was prayed this morning, Father, your word doesn't return void. God, your word accomplishes its purpose, whatever it sets out to achieve, Father. And I just pray today, God, you just help us to hear what you're saying, God, have open ears. God, open hearts for your word. Soften our hearts today, God, and I pray whatever you say today, God, that it sticks, God, that it speaks strongly, Father God, and that it moves us, God, towards you today. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, you know what? I'm so sorry if you don't like worship and music in this place because you're getting a lot of it today, but um, I just wanted to... Just play you a little something that just as I was preparing this message, I just really felt on my heart. Um, we're talking about faith. We're talking about being faith-filled. And faith is something that we don't just think about. And faith is kind of not over here. It's almost something that we just need to get inside us. We need to get it inside us. Jace has, Jace and I have this thing about just that, mm, you know, that mm, that you need sometimes. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. You're all like, I don't know what you're talking about. Because I can't put words to it. I don't know what it is. It's that, mm, it's like that righteous indignation of David where he goes up. There's so many people listening to Goliath shouting all his rubbish. Heaps of them were listening. But David's the one that went up and just like, who is this uncircumcised Philistine talking against the armies of the Lord? David had some, mm, I don't know, there's probably a good Italian word for it. Some like, there's like, I know the opposite. Um, Nanda loves the word motta. Like, oh, she's so motta. I think it literally translates to dead. It's like, she's dead. Whatever the opposite of motta is, we need a bit of that, a bit of, mm, that, you know, when we're seeking God after something, we're not pushovers, we're not waifs in the wind. We're not flailing about like those, um, you know, in front of the car yards, those wacky and flailable um, guys flailing about. But, you know, we've got a solid foundation in God and in the Word. And so when we ask God, when we petition God for something, it's a, mm, it's a, God, I believe. God, I believe. And, you know, sometimes when we start believing God for stuff, it's, it's, we're not this. Honestly, I've been there. Who's been there? You've got something that you need to believe God for. You've got something you need to put your faith towards. And honestly, sometimes you might start a bit like, ah, oh, ah, oh, God, if it's your will, I have this situation. Oh, God, I'd really like it if you could do this. Sometimes we start or sometimes we even start defeated. Like, oh, God, I don't, even, I don't even know if this is something you can do. I don't even know if i got faith for this. But just by believing, just by praying, we activate our faith. And in the end, it's on the inside of us. In the end, we believe to the point of like the heroes in the Bible. They believe to the point of death. They believe to the point of ridicule. And we get this thing on the inside of us and it burns on the inside of us. And worship can help us do this. So I just want to um, play you a little something today. But I just encourage you, just while I'm playing, I just want you to picture, is there a battle of faith that you've got going on in your life in the moment? Is there something that you're believing God for? Is there something that seems impossible that you're facing? And whatever that is, I just want you to hold it before God in your heart today as you just listen to this song and just engage your spirit with what's being sung. And you'll know what I mean when I say it, but here we go.
will believe. I 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 will believe. For greater things. I will believe, I will believe, I will believe for greater things. I will believe, I will believe, I will believe for greater things. I will believe, I will believe. Jesus, I will believe for 
There's no power like the power of Jesus. No, there's no power like the power of Jesus. So I will believe. Oh, I will believe. Because there's no power like the power of Jesus. of God, that they are insignificant compared to your size, God, your grandeur, Father, your power, God. And God, so we just make a decision today to believe, to take you at your word, God. God, not because of us, Father, not because of our ability to believe, God, but just because of who you are, Father. So great, so good. God, so holy, so powerful, so worthy, Father. So I believe, oh, so we believe, oh, so we believe, oh, so we believe, oh, so I believe, oh, so I will believe, so I will believe. your power. Nothing stands against your power. Cause there's no power like the power of Jesus. Thank you, God. And God, we just commit the time we have left into your hands, Father God. And God, we just pray, God, help us to grow in our faith, Father. Help us not to see the circumstance, God, but help us to see above that, God. Help us to believe in the power of Jesus, God. Help us to believe in everything that was already bought for us, God. We are victorious in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we believe. We believe and we get it inside us. It gets into us. Not just an outward experience. And I'm okay for you to use your emotions to help you believe. I'm actually okay with that. You know, we're meant to love the Lord with all our heart, all our soul, everything within us, every part of us. And I just encourage you, whatever you're believing God for, just bring it to Him. Bring it to His feet. And He will build you up and He will show you who He is, that He's fully able and fully capable. So I've only got a few minutes left, but I just want to talk to us about faith. And I've titled my message, Out of This World. Out of this world. My Italian nunna, no matter what you look like, oh, but you're out of this world. She always tells you, out of this world. You're out of this world. But I'm here to tell you today, dead set, you are out of this world. And first of all, why that's true is because we believe in a God who's out of this world. We believe that God created the heavens and the earth. Hebrews 11 is where the Bible talks about faith. Hebrews 11 verse 1 says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I love that. And we're going to get to that in a minute. 
But in verse 3, it says, By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that which was seen was not made of things which are visible. Hebrews 11.3, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that which was seen was not made of things which are visible. We believe that everything that we see was made by an invisible God. Everything. And you know, that's not even a crazy belief. That's not even an outlandish belief. That's just Christianity 101. Christianity 101 is just believing in God for who he is, as our creator. That's baseline Christianity. 52.1% of Aussies apparently believe that. That's what they signed on their census. They believe in God to be this big supernatural creator. He's a supernatural God. He's not of this world. He created the world. He made the natural world. And yes, he made a whole set of laws so that there's a cause and effect for things. But he sits outside of them. Just by definition of being the creator, he sits outside of that. And just like at the beginning of time, he sat outside of the natural and just spoke and the natural came into being. Things shifted. It says the spirit hovers over the waters in Genesis 1 and it was darkness. And then all of a sudden God says, let there be light. And all of a sudden something in the natural shifted, something changed, something illuminated. And just in the same way that God did that at the beginning of time, he does that for us now. He still does that. So many evidences in the Bible where God showed up powerfully, where there was going to be a natural cause and effect to things, a natural series of events, but God shows up and intervenes. And Hebrews 11 lists so many of those. Jake, Jason spoke about um, Abraham giving up Isaac. Well, that was a crazy miracle. That started with God saying, you're going to have a child when you're super old. Now, I don't know about you, but I struggle having a child when I'm young. I'm so tired all the time. But God gives them a word that you're going to have a child when you're crazy old. And they have to believe God that that's true. They engage their faith. And sure enough, God changed the natural. He changed what was going to happen, the natural cause and effect of things. That, no, you know what? When you're old, you actually, your body hasn't got the processes to make a child anymore. That's what the natural evidence was. But God brings new evidence to the table. He doesn't exist in the natural realm. He's not of this world. He's out of this world. And God brings new evidence to the table. And his thing is, you know what? It might be in the natural world that she's too old, but I say she's going to bear a son. And sure enough, guess what happened? The natural series of events didn't take place. What actually happened was our supernatural God changed those series of events supernaturally and a different outcome took place. And when we're believing God in faith, we're looking at these things which, naturally speaking, we probably shouldn't expect the outcome that we're asking God for. Maybe you're believing God for a job and naturally speaking, you're too old or you're, uh, you're not skilled enough and you're thinking, God, or the market's just not right for it right now and nobody can get a job because of all these southerners moving up from down south. I don't know what it is you're believing for. And in the natural, in the seen world, there's an outcome that should happen. There's some evidence for what should happen. But our God is out of this world. And I'll show you later, you are out of this world. And so we don't have to put our minds and get caught up in those natural evidences. We engage our faith. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. So when you rock up to the table, you don't care about the natural evidences. I'm going to get rid of my phone, but I've always wanted to do this. You ready? You bring new evidence to the table Come on, it's one of those superhero movies. Every time they're like, we've got a plan, they clear the table. I'm like, I hope none of that was important. I hope no one had their phone there. And you bring new evidence to the table. The phone doesn't quite do it justice. But you say, ah, uh-uh, the natural might have had that evidence, but my evidence is the word of God. My evidence is whatever God tells me. That's what you bring to the table. And you are not, I actually need those though, so let's pick those up. But you are not of this world either. Hebrews 11 talks about all these people who are full of faith. And I love it. And I also hate it because, whoa, 
they had epic faith, like the things they believe God for. It's amazing. And I, I want to be that. I want to have the faith that Abraham had when he took his little Isaac up the mountain. That's what I want. And it, it lists all these amazing heroes of the faith. But I want us to turn there. Can we turn to Hebrews 11 verse 13? And partway through Hebrews 11, it's listing a few of the heroes and then after this passage, a few more come. But partway through, verse 13, it says, These all died in faith, not having received the things promised, but having seen them and greeted them from afar, having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. Now, I'm going to keep going, but just quickly, not having received the things promised, it does this really cool thing where it actually says even though that they believe God and got things in this world, they were actually setting themselves up for the promise that was Jesus. And I'm not going to go into that, but if you hit Hebrews 12, you'll see how that all unfolds. So that's not for today. That's for a different day. But what is for today is the end of verse 13. It says, having acknowledged or other translations say, and they confessed that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. And then verse 14 For people who speak thus make it clear that they're seeking a homeland. If they'd been thinking of the land from which they'd gone out, they would have had the opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country that is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he is prepared for them a city. It's a bit of a random bit in the middle of Hebrews 11. What is this? What is it talking about? End of 13, they confessed that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. They made it clear they were seeking a home, but they weren't thinking about the home from which they had left. Otherwise, they would have had the opportunity to return. But instead, they desire a better country, a heavenly one. See, the people that believe God, the heroes of our faith, they recognize that they were out of this world. They don't They weren't a part of this world. They didn't belong to this world. It says they acknowledged they were strangers and exiles on the earth. You know, some translations say aliens, but I don't want to freak you out here today. Well, this is the wrong religion. Tom Cruise, sign me up. P.S., you have to go and see the new Top Gun. I don't normally promote movies for free from the pulpit, but Tom Cruise, take a freebie. Top Gun is awesome. Nonetheless, we digress. They confessed that they were strangers and aliens on the earth. They didn't belong here. And why does that matter? Well, he kind of goes on to unpack that in verse 14. It says, For people who speak this way make it clear that they're seeking a home. If they had been thinking of the home from which they had left, they would have had the opportunity to return. But instead, they were seeking a heavenly home. These people recognized, the heroes of our faith recognized that their life, who they really are, isn't contained in this world, isn't contained in the things that the world has to offer. Instead, they understand that they're actually children of God, children of a supernatural God, and their world is the unseen world. And everything they do in this life is with the sight of the promise of heaven, the sight of the promise of the unseen world as their end goal. They're not focused on the things of this world. Because I don't know, I'd hazard a guess to say, if they were focused on the things of this world, when God said to Sarah, oh, Sarah, you're going to have a baby. And Abraham, oh, you're going to have a baby at this age and Sarah's going to conceive. What is our natural evidence? If they belong to this world, if all they could see were the things of the natural world, what do you think their response would have been? No, thank you. Not even no, no thanks, I'm good, we're good, we've lived, we've done well. No, that's not possible, don't even, and and for Sarah, the heartache, especially in those days for a barren woman, it's a bit different today, but particularly back then, the heartache, it's almost like a God, how dare you say such things? How dare you, when I've wanted this my whole life, and now you wave this parrot in my face in my old age? The natural world, this world, It's not on the same page as God. He's on a completely different page. But this world's not on his page. This world has a series of evidences that it tries to tie us down with. And that's what doubt does. What do you think the devil does? Oh, did God really tell you not to eat of the trees of the garden? 
Where do you think doubt comes from? Doubt doesn't come from the unseen world. Doubt doesn't come from the supernatural world. Doubt comes from the natural world. It's trying to constrain us to only believe what's a part of this world. But you know what? You are not a part of this world. You are out of this world. You serve a supernatural God. And so your evidence isn't here. Your evidence is what does my God say? And you fix your eyes on Jesus. You fix your eyes on the Word of God. You inscribe it. The Bible says to write it on your heart. I mean, back in those days, they were writing with clay tablets. Like, it's, it's a very visual picture of getting the Word of God inside you, getting it on your heart so that when it comes time to have to believe in faith, you're not back here just focused on the things of this world, but instead you recognize you are out of this world and your God is out of this world. He operates in a completely different level and what might not be possible in the natural is more than possible for our God in the supernatural. Come on, what might not be possible for us in the natural is more than possible for God in the supernatural. Oh, it is though, but we're going to say it again. What is not possible for us in the natural is more than possible for God in the supernatural. And that's what I mean by getting it in you. I won't punch anyone. We used to have Dr. Rob Carmen here. When he'd make a good point and didn't feel like people were getting it, he'd just go and punch the front row. I think Simon, yeah, Jason's like, it actually hurt. I don't know if I was okay with it, but he was amazing. But it's because sometimes we just got to get it in us. And it might start as, oh, yeah, yes, that's true. But the more you meditate on the Word of God and the more you fix your eyes on God and not on your circumstance, you'll start to get it inside you. It'll burn in your bones so that when people are ridiculing you for building a giant boat where there's never been a flood and you're saying to them, well, I'm the only one that's going to survive and I'm going to spend years building this boat, you're not going to give up. You're not going to be condemned like the rest of them, but you're actually going to rise above. I, uh, I went to Greece once. Perks of doing your PhD, Kerry, you get free travel all over the world when COVID's not on. It was awesome. I went to Greece and I was naive, like as you are when you're a young person traveling. I just thought I was invincible, whatever. So I needed a taxi to the airport. I was actually going to the next stop. And my hotel owner ordered the taxi. And I don't understand Greek. I don't even understand Italian. I don't know what's going on. And he just says, I'll wait here. And he goes out to the taxi driver and gives him like a lecture for like five minutes. They keep going. I'm thinking, guys, I got a flight to catch. Can you hurry your conversation along? And then, but it seems a bit aggressive. I don't know what's going on. And then he comes back and he's like, okay, you can get in now. Now, guys, I've seen Taken. I've seen Liam Neeson. I know what can happen to girls overseas. It's like, sh should I get in? I don't know. Okay, I'll get in. I need to get to the airport. Oh, well, I think the vibe was like ended on a positive note. So maybe they're not going to kidnap me. This is good. So I'm in this cab. It's already a bit weird. Heading towards the airport, I think. What would I know? I'm a tourist. And then all of a sudden, my cab driver spots this guy selling pretzels on the side of the road, like way in the distance. And this is as we're making our own lanes, by the way. There's not two lanes in Greece. Apparently, there's 55. And you just choose which one you want to go on and like risk death. It was terrifying. And this guy's up here. And so my cab driver just goes like this. I can't do it with a microphone, but as an Italian, you get the... No words, zero words were spoken, not even mouth, nothing. The pretzel guy, and like we're talking the good stuff, like the nice hot fresh pretzels, he's up there going like this <laughs> and this. But it's like it has an angry vibe. To an Australian, it has an angry vibe. This, this. It's like, all right, don't know what that's about. Maybe there's a bit of a beef with the pretzel man. Let's keep driving. But we didn't keep driving. We pulled up right in front of pretzel man. Zero words were exchanged. And zero cash was exchanged. But somehow, a pretzel enters our vehicle from the pretzel man to the driver and gets immediately passed back to me. Oh, no, no, I'm good, thanks. I've seen taken. I don't want your drug lace pretzels, please. <laughs> Didn't say that, of course, but I'm thinking it. Oh, no, 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 no. Now, I'm from like a, a European culture. You can't reject food, particularly free random food that's been given to you. It's rude. And I thought I would rather get abducted than be rude to this cab driver because that's what passive people do. <laughs> but don't worry, I was smart about it. 
I was like, okay, we've been driving for about 10 minutes, probably in the direction of the airport. We probably have 20 minutes left based on our trip here. So I'm going to protect myself. I'm going to make sure we're always following signs to the airport. And if it gets weird, I'll think about what I'll do then. But I'll probably jump out the door if we seem to be not going towards the airport. Because, you know, in movies, it's always super obvious that they go past the sign and then the person tries to open the door. So I was good. And then I was also only going to eat a little bit of the pretzel because I was really hungry and it was a really good looking pretzel. And I thought, what are the odds that he's laced this with enough drugs that I'm going to pass out in the 20 minutes if I only eat a small portion of it? Now, for anyone that understands pharmacology, that is not valid reasoning. (laughs) That is terrible reasoning. He could have put a lot on it. I could have passed out, but this is what I used to myself to justify. Honestly, it wasn't the being rude part. It was the hunger. I just wanted this pretzel. I was hoping for the best. And sure enough, praise God. I don't know if it was just God protecting me. Somehow, I don't know what happened, what their arrangement is, if they always just give free pretzels to random girls without... I got a pretzel, got on the plane, I was fine. No abduction, as you probably noticed. I'm here today to tell the tale. Why did I tell you that crazy story? Firstly, I kind of enjoy it. It's it's a bizarre story. You don't have many opportunities like that in your life. But clearly, I was in a different world. I had no understanding of the laws that were in place in this particular world. I thought I understood road rules. I did not. Apparently in Greece, there's a completely different set of rules for your behavior on the road. I thought I understood the premise of basic human communication, that you had to verbalize something for the other person to understand you, verbalize back, and give you a pretzel. Clearly, I did not understand communication at all, because apparently doing this a few times with a guy down the street gets you a pretzel. Hot tip if you're traveling to Greece. I dare you to try it. I didn't understand the world I was in. No idea. It looked so foreign and alien to me. And if you had said, hey, Ruth, do you know what? Like, oh, yeah, Greece, that's really cool. All you got to do is do this, do this, do this, and you get a pretzel. I've been like, you're crazy. That doesn't happen because that's not my understanding of human interaction at all or communication. My world was different. And in the same way as weird and bizarre that some of the things of faith we're called to step out in might seem to our natural minds as as odd and hard to understand. Some of the stuff that God calls us to is a little bit counterintuitive. It forces us to step out in a way that we don't really understand with our natural mind. But God is from a completely different world with a completely different way of doing things. His ways are higher than our thoughts. His thoughts are Uh, higher than ours, greater than ours. Who could tell God something he doesn't understand? He's so far ahead of us. So acknowledging that when we're presented with something that we need faith for, I just want to encourage you today, get your eyes off the natural and trust that, you know what? God actually understands the supernatural perfectly. God operates in the supernatural perfectly. There's nothing you can add, nothing you can detract. He has it fully under control. And all we need to do is close some doors to the world that we're leaving behind, to this earthly world, and keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. And just the final thing I wanted to encourage us today is just, it says that if they had a mind back to the place where they came from, they would have had the opportunity to return from it. It's basically kind of implying that were they double-minded, were they kind of half in with God but also half in with their natural circumstance, it would have given them an opportunity to kind of shrink back into their natural circumstance or their natural set of expectations. But instead, what it seems like they did is they just closed that door to the natural world, closed that door to their earthly expectations and fixed their eyes on Jesus. And I think sometimes, particularly in this Western world, we're not great at that part. That's the bit we struggle with. We kind of open these doors a little bit. Like, I'll believe God, but I'm just going to leave this little door, the front door of my house, like a jar. I'm going to leave a key under the pot so that if I ever need to come back to this place of just the safety of the natural, not believing in God, I'll be able to come back. But I think what God is calling us to do today is just to sever ties 
with that natural world just to slam some doors, slam some doors shut. I don't know what those doors are for you because they're different for everybody, I think. But whatever they are for you, whatever's holding you back from believing in God, just slam it shut. If you've got some voices in your life that cause you to doubt, that always speak negatively about you stepping out in faith and, and trying to believe God for things, just turn those voices off. Even if it is just you feel you spend too much time looking at earthly things, the things you fill your mind with, Netflix, Facebook, social media, all of this stuff, and that it's like you can't see God because it's so clouded by all the earthly things that you're constantly filling your mind with every day. Maybe they're the doors you need to close. And I just want to encourage us today, just slam the doors to that seen world because you're out of this world. Our God is out of this world and he is faithful. He will come through for you today. Does that sound good? All right. Jane, could you um, jump up? We're just going to pray today. Why don't you jump to your feet, church? We're going to end the service in just one minute. But just like Jason said, doing business with God, we never want you to leave here just hearing something without it actually affecting any change. But I just would love if you could just picture whatever you're facing right now, whatever faith step you need to be taking right now. And I just pray, just like Jace got us to do before, just ask God for some clarity. Is there a door I need to be closing? Is there something I need to shut to help focus my sight on you, God, to focus my expectation on you, whatever that is in your world? Just take a minute right now to put that before him. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We just pray that you just show us those parts of our life, God, that are tethering us to that natural world, Father. God, things that we haven't fully closed the door on, God, I just pray you'd help us see those today. God, and you just help us, Father, God, to lift our head, God, to lift our eyes towards you. God, we just come against distraction, Father. Maybe there's things drawing our attention to the left or the right. God, I just pray you'd reveal them to us right now. God, and reveal them to us as we pray, Father. And God, I just pray, God, for such intimacy with you. God, I just want to pray over all of these people right now, God, that we would be a people, God, that believe you. God, that take you at your word, Father. God, we are faith-filled. Nothing's impossible for you. That we would measure every situation against the bigness of you, God, not our circumstance or experience. God, that we would take you at your word, that we wouldn't just believe that you could, but that you will. God, and that we would act like it, Father. God, that's what I pray over this people in Jesus' name. And God, we just pray to God. I, I see people bringing in miracle reports. God, I see people, God, God, celebrating victories, Father God, things that they've been facing for a long time, God, but overcoming. Father God, I just see the, the level of faith in this place rising, God. God, and I just pray, God, keep expanding our faith. Keep growing our faith, Father God. God, let us trust you to the end. Let us believe you to the end, we pray in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And just before we close, I just want to give an opportunity. If you're watching us online and you've never received Jesus in your heart, but you want to, you want to be a part of His world. You want to leave your world, but be a part of His world. His world is so good. His world is so pure, righteous, holy. He's got such great things for you. And if that's you today, I just want you to get in touch with us. If there's something burning on your heart right now as you're listening to this, I believe that's God calling you to Himself. And we're here to help you. We want to pray with you. We want to show you how you can accept God as your Lord and Saviour. And there's details on your screen. Why don't you just follow that and get in touch?
beautiful church. We just love you. And um, I just want to encourage the altars open. We've had some amazing times praying for people. And if you just need someone to stand with you and believe with you, help you be strengthened in your faith today, the altars open. Come, we'll pray with you and support you. But I just encourage you, why don't you give Hebrews 11 and 12 a read this week and get some of that faith on the inside you. And I know Jace will share more about it in the coming weeks. Have a good week and we'll see you next week.